If you're looking for a better way to keep track of all the different things you need to do, look no further than this video. My absolute favorite way of planning all of my tasks is in a no-code software called SmartSuite. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how you can really quickly get up and running and build your task list in this tool. So if finding a new solution to keep you on task is of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Gareth and this is Gap Consulting. It's our mission to help you get the full potential out of the no-code tools that you are using. All of those tools that allow you to build your own custom apps and processes without needing to know any code. In this video, I'm gonna be focusing on one of my favorite no-code tools, SmartSuite. But before we get into things, I wanna first invite you to join me for some free training. Automation is the key building block of no code. It's gonna help you do so much of that repetitive, mundane work that you're already doing, the copying and pasting, and set it on autopilot. Have it run in the background so you no longer have to waste your time with it. I'm gonna teach you the basics of automation. Doesn't matter what tool you're using. It might be smart suite or it could be another tool. Regardless of what you're using, you're gonna get value from this free training. Sign up at gapconsulting.io slash webinar dash registration and you'll get immediate access. But without further ado, let's hop on into my screen and I wanna, of course, invite you to follow along with me. If you have your own smart suite account, open it up, follow along what I'm doing here. If you don't, then please use our affiliate link. You'll find it wherever this video is posted. It's a nice way for you to show some love back to the channel and helps us do what we do. All right, hopping on in here, you'll see that I already have one of my favorite solutions here. I mean, top three solutions. It's right here. It's my tasks. I'm not going to dive into my actual tasks, but I'm going to show you how to easily set it up for yourself. We're going to create a new solution here, and we don't even have to import a template to get started. If we start from scratch, the basic building blocks inside of SmartSuite are already going to be loaded up in here. So here we have a brand new solution, and you'll see that I already start off with these fields assigned to priority, status, and due date. This is literally exactly what you need for pretty much any kind of task management solution. So we don't really need to make any edits here whatsoever. I do want to kind of change things up though. So I will give it a new name. And so I'll call this my tasks uh, two because I already have my tasks. We can also update the table name here from table one. We can just call it tasks. And essentially a table in Smart Suite allows us to have a collection of the same type of thing. So if we're collecting tasks, if we're collecting contact information, if we're collecting project information, whatever that is, it's gonna live in its own table. For us, it's all task information. So here we go. These are the common changes that I highly recommend anybody make when they're implementing their own task management software. And the first one is gonna have to do with this title. You can simply double click here on the field where it says title, and we're gonna rename this to be task name. And I'm gonna make a couple of changes. I do want this to be manually input, not auto-generated, because I'm going to manually type in the name of most of my tasks. But I do not need it to be unique, because in many cases we will have a recurring task, a task where we're gonna to have to do the same thing every week, every two weeks, every month, there's many, many different instances like this, especially where work is concerned, that we have the same task that repeats. So if it has the same name, that's fine. We're not requiring it to be unique. Next, we're not going to require an entry in this field. This is just for edit purposes. It's my own preference. A lot of times I'll create a record and I'll think I'm going to go back to update the name of it. And if we require an entry in the field, it will not save that new record appropriately. So I toggle this off. It's kind of my default preference, but I'll leave that up to you. Let's go ahead and update the field now. And we see that we have called it task name. We can create a new record here. And the task name uh, is showing up blank. It allows us to then come in, click in and say, uh, do this thing. So whatever your task is, you can easily just add it here. 
Now, the next field here is comments. This allows us to actually have a conversation around our tasks, and I don't feel the need to include this, especially if this is my own personal task list. If, on the other hand, you're managing a team and building this for that purpose, you might keep this on. And that allows you to then have a conversation down here within the record, and this is an easy way to access the conversation component. Note that I can still hide this field. I'll right-click it here, remove it from display. That doesn't mean I can't comment on the record. If I open this up again in the future and I pop open the comments section here, this is called the communication center, it's still here. It's just removing it from view. So I'll leave this up to you again. This is my preference to remove this because usually I'm putting in my own tasks in my task list. But again, if you're managing a team, you might have a different preference. Next, these are the core components of any task, and Smart Suite, as I already mentioned, has them out of the gate. Number one, a task has to be assigned to somebody. By default, if we look at the settings here, we'll see that only one person can be assigned to a task, but you can add multiple if you would like. Simply make the toggle choice here. You can also select specific members. So rather than allowing everybody within your organization to be available to be added, maybe you only want a specific team. Maybe you want specific people within the organization. You can further condense the task list so that you can't just select anybody within the org. Again, if you're doing this personally and you haven't shared your workspace externally, then you don't need to worry about this. It'll just be for you. But if you're part of a larger organization, this is something to consider. So here, I tend to like to set up a default value. Again, if these are my personal tasks, by default, I'm probably gonna assign myself to the task. So I can click into default and select the record creator, basically saying whoever creates the task by default is gonna be the person who is assigned to the task. Let's update that field change and move on to the next. I'll look at priority. It's up to you if you wanna keep this or not. I personally tend to keep this in my task list, but I don't use it all that often. I set a default value of normal and I kinda of just leave it alone. Only under very rare conditions do I tweak these different tasks and mark them as urgent. To be fully transparent, if I have an urgent task that must be completed, well then I just take care of it without even adding it to my task list most of the time. So set up a default value if you would like and update the field here. Next, we're gonna look at status. Now for me, I don't need this ready for review. Maybe you do, especially if you're working in a team. But as the owner of my company, I'm rarely sending my tasks to someone else and asking for them to double check my work. So I tend to remove this from my personal task list. I like to start with backlog, have my in process, and then I move up to complete. I also make sure that the default value here is set to backlog. The default value that we've been setting for all these fields simply means that when a new record comes into existence, by default, it's gonna take the value that we assign on the default field. So let's go ahead and update here. And then of course, lastly, we have our due date. And you can see we've chosen a display format here, which I love. We are connecting this to the linked status field. So when we update the status, if we go back to the status field here, you'll see that we actually mark it as complete. That is removing the task from our overall list of things to do. It's gone and the system knows that it's been completed when it meets this criteria. So then at that point, we update the due date field as if to say like, this task was done within the time frame, or it's now complete, whatever the case may be. Also inside of the due date field here, we can still set a default. We can set a default to be, you know, uh, today plus let's say seven days. So that by default, when we create a new uh, record inside of our task list, it's automatically gonna get a due date seven days from the date of creation. Having that relative date is really helpful because it makes sure that we are kind of like automatically tagging stuff there. And of course we can change that due date as needed. So now let's create a new task just simply here inside and you'll see that all those default values were automatically adopted. I've got assigned to me, priority, status, and due date all showing up. Of course, I can edit them as I see fit, move that to the 25th, give it a name, name here, you get the idea.
So these are the changes I like to make to the overall structure of information that I'm collecting for my tasks. Now I want to highlight a couple of the key features that I love for SmartSuite in terms of how we are going to visualize our data and also how we are going to repeat certain tasks based on the type of task that it is. So let's take a quick look at those two things. Number one, visualizing our data. I like to set up a different view in the Kanban style. We have the Kanban view option here. This view type allows us to stack data based on a particular field. In this case, I'm using the status field. So you can see I'm column grouped by status and I can further apply a filter that says, hey, look, I don't really care if the status is complete. Let's filter out that information. So I'll say uh, is not, the filter is not or is none of complete. If it's complete, I don't need to see it here in the view because I've already done it. So as we work through our process, we can grab these tasks and drag them through. And when they're done, they will completely be removed from the view because they're now complete and we filter that data out. I can also update the information that shows up here. Maybe I want to show the due date here on the record. Maybe I want to show uh, who it's assigned to. Right. All of this information I can bring in. This is similar to the last screen that we were looking at the grid view. But here you can see those same fields, the due date, who it's assigned to and the priority as well as the name of the task. And of course, I can open this up as well. This is the other part I really like to update in terms of how I look at my data. This is the default view of an expanded record, but we can make edits to this. Let's go click on the ellipse here and go into page settings and I'll go to one column because there's not a lot of data for most tasks. I don't need to worry about the description. So I'm actually going to bump this information down to the bottom. I'll move it on down and I can actually then now that it's at the bottom, I can set up a new section and I'll call this hidden. And inside of this particular section, because I don't usually need descriptions around my task list, uh, I can just set up some rules that say, hey, I only want to see this under certain conditions. So I only want to see this section if the description is not empty. By making that selection and now saving this record, you can see that that whole section is automatically or conditionally removed from my view unless there's information there. So that way it's not cluttering up my data. And of course, I can rearrange these different components as I see fit to make this easier for me to view when I expand that record. So really nice, simple click. Now I can really customize how that data is showing up. Now for our closing thoughts, let's talk about how we can easily build those recurring tasks. This feature is slept on so much inside of SmartSuite. In the due date here, if we click into this event, we have this repeating task option. And this allows us to say this task will repeat under certain conditions. In this case, maybe this is a weekly repeating task. So this task called name here is going to uh, repeat on a weekly basis every Friday, for example. So we can say we will create a new task and we will set the new task to uh, status of backlog. What fields are we going to be copying in? Well, the person who it's assigned to, that's going to be the same. The priority of the task that we're recreating, that's going to be the same. But maybe we don't need to worry about description. So we can kind of go line by line here and say of the different elements we're going to copy them from the previous task when we create the new one. And so you see here that when the status is set to completed, that is going to trigger the creation of the new task based on this repetition pattern, in this case weekly, and we're going to be copying these specific fields. So let's take a look at how this works in practice. I've saved that up. You now see this uh, icon right here. And when I mark this to complete, what's going to happen? Boom. This particular task is completed. And just like that, we see the new task being added. So it was assigned priority status. Everything is looking good here. The part that I missed is bringing in the task name. So I need to make sure to go into the repeating here. And let's make sure that we drill into those fields to copy that information as well. Now, unfortunately, because it is the primary field here, the leftmost field, we don't see it as an option here. So a quick little workaround here is to add a new field. 
we're going to build a field to the right called text and I'll just call this name, add the field. I'm gonna copy what's in here, paste it over here and then going back to our primary field, remember earlier we set this to a manual input, now we will auto generate it. Yes, we understand and we will simply adopt the name field. So plug that name field in there, update, and now I can hide the name field. I right click, remove it from display. Now inside of our due date on the repeating element, go back in here, repeat the task, go into our fields to copy, and now we see name because it's a proper text field and it follows its own special set of rules. So now I'll make sure to copy the name from one to the other. So let's go ahead and save those changes up here. To test this, let's just create a new task. I'll open this up. Again, I can't edit the task name now. I have to actually edit the uh, text component. So I'll have to go back into the page settings here and we'll go over to sections visibility. Let's get those fields, excuse me. Bring that name field up here and I don't worry about the task name as much. I care about the actual field that I can update, which is the name field that we created. Let's go ahead and save those settings. I feel good about it. And now we'll pop that open again. Here's our new one. This is new task. And remember when we complete this task, then we will create the new task. And so uh, we have to set up those conditions again in our repeating task, all fields, make sure we're not copying the description, but everything else, yes, that's perfect. Move out of here. And when we complete this, we'll see that this one gets completed seven days prior to the due date. The next one is already added seven days following the previous due date. We are all set. The best part that I haven't even mentioned is this is fully accessible on your mobile device. You can also build dashboards inside a smart suite to help manage your tasks even better. I hope you got a ton of value from this video and become much more productive with some proper task management and repeating tasks in smart suite. If you loved this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up subscribe to the channel, but most importantly, my friend, keep on building.